After weeks and in, in a lot of places, months of drought conditions, Iowa farmers enjoyed some much needed rain last week. Trouble is, some got way too much. We've got Ag Secretary <coughs> Mike Neg joining us now to talk about a uh, terrible situation down in southeast Iowa yeah. with the flooding. Right. Uh, what are you hearing from that part of the state and how widespread down there? Well, I'll tell you, first of all, we're reminded that Mother Nature is still in control when yeah. it comes to agriculture. And you've got this situation where in south East Iowa, yes, we're experiencing too much water and really have throughout the year down there sure. compared with Northwest and Western Iowa, where we really are continuing to see drought conditions. So it's it's a challenging situation to be sure. But really that that uh, too much water really is confined to the south, really southeastern corner of the state along the river. Uh, but but it's tough down there. Yeah. Opposite situation with the drought up in the northwestern uh, portion of the state right. and a lot of people don't necessarily understand that it's not just how much rain you get it's when it falls at the at that moment in the plant's life that matters as to what that yield is going to be in the fall right that's absolutely right you know uh yeah, we've got we talk about things like the when the when the corn crop tassels you know yeah. that's an important time and, and certainly when the soybeans are starting to put blossoms on and set those pods those are all things that impact your yield that you're looking for by harvest and so this is a really critical time in crop development from here into really yeah. the next month or so. Uh, but you know, anytime the, 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 the uh, layman's uh, way to look at this is anytime that plant's not able to do what it, exactly what it's supposed to do, which is have its leaves out collecting sunlight, then it's going to potentially be impacting the amount that it can yield uh, through the growing season. What, what's your thoughts uh, based on what you just saw with Ed's forecast there? Well, I'd say we need a little more of it, uh, yeah. but it's fallen in the right places today. You know, you look across, hey, we, we started out, June was one of the driest starts to, to the month that we've seen on record in Iowa. Now over the last seven days or so, uh, you know, you've, you've seen some widespread rain, but you still have parts of Northwest and Western Iowa that just are still not getting what they need to. And here's something to remember, you know, this year versus last year, the gas tank was full when we came into last growing season. There was a lot of right. moisture down in that soil profile. Not the case this year. So really, we're relying on what falls for this crop. And we don't have a lot of irrigation in the state of Iowa. You know, you can go out and put the sprinkler on your lawn, but most of Iowa is not irrigated. So we really do rely on, on what falls in the form of rain. Anybody who's ever uh, driven to Denver and gone through western Nebraska, right. eastern Colorado, like, oh, wh why don't we have these giant irrigation systems? There's a reason we don't. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Most of the time we get exactly what we need. Yeah. yeah. Uh, or, or too much, which is uh, unfortunately the case down in southeast Iowa. I, Mike, while we got you here, we got to talk about renewable fuel standard. Yeah. That was the big uh, news last week. That Supreme Court decision that said, you know, these small oil refineries, yeah, they can still get these waivers from the EPA to not have to blend ethanol into their gasoline. Is this as big a deal as it would have been under the previous, the Trump administration, because we know when President Biden was elected, mm -hmm. you figured you were going to get a friendlier, uh, a friendlier a set of folks in Washington to biofuels. And I think all in indications are is that this EPA is more supportive of the renewable fuel standard. Now, you know, uh, the Supreme Court did did something and then they didn't do some things. So one mm -hmm. thing that they did do is, yes, they, they, they uh, rolled back some of those provisions that would allow a, a refinery to apply for a waiver. But it's still up to the EPA to decide whether a hardship exists. Right. And they didn't address uh, some of those things. And, and that's good because you still have to prove as a refinery that you're actually experiencing a hardship with compliance with the renewable fuel standard. And so that's still something that can be done through interpretation by EPA. So the call remains the same. EPA should enforce the renewable fuel standard uh, according to the intent of Congress and that we should have a growing renewable energy sector in this country. That, that's why it's designed the way it is. And there's uh, plenty of room for this EPA to, to enforce it that way. Yeah, bottom line, the court has spoken, but you and our congressional delegation still have people to put pressure on when it, when it comes down to it. Mike Neg, our, our Ag Secretary here in the state of Iowa. Thanks for being on the program this afternoon. We're back with more on the news at four right after this.